Good morning, my name is David Grinspoon. Oh, and are you a life form? I do think of myself as a life form, yes. How do you know that? Uh, how do I know I'm a life form? Yeah. Well, um, we could get very uh, philosophical and uh, Cartesian here and ask how one knows anything. Um, but uh, I suppose uh, the way I categorize things and the way I look around uh, the universe and, and the, my immediate environment, I have uh, things in common with other things that seem to me like life forms. And uh, so that's, I've never really questioned whether I'm a life form or not. <laughs> well, let's, let, can you show us the rock? What, your, yeah. Show us a rock. Yeah. So this is, so this let's is compare kind you of a, to a rock. rock. There's a yeah. rock. Hold it up closer, please. No, yeah. no, no, do your face here. Okay. That's a rock and this, there's you. This is a and, rock and this is me. What's the difference between those two? Difference between these, uh, well, there are a lot of differences, but I guess the relevant difference to why I consider myself a life form and this rock not a life form is uh has to do with how we interact with the rest of the world this rock is pretty much static and stable it's not really on the time scales that i'm aware of certainly with my senses doing anything but but you're moving faster than the plant can you show us the plant next yeah. to you? the plant is and this on different time scales this too, plant right? is fairly static that's true and yet actually this particular plant uh my wife and I have nurtured from it was really almost dead when we put it really? in this pot. Cool. It was um, a different color and almost had no leaves and we gave it water and made sure it had enough light and it's uh, we've actually seen it behave in a way that I would not expect this rock to behave. So it is interacting with the world, exchange, apparently exchanging matter because it's gotten bigger uh, and but changed its shape. a year or two, but what if you yeah. look at a rock for a billion years? Right, right. So over, over a long period of time, um, this rock, or probably not just it, but the, it, the world it was connected to, if I go back and, th and look at its history, um, it would have behaved in ways that perhaps did seem more to me um, would 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 be fit more in the, that category of how I'm describing the properties of living systems interacting with their their surroundings and so forth. And but surely so, it's not a, just a question of time. So that but, yeah, but it's not just a question of also being static or changing because uh, there's also the the way in which I'm interchanging ma this plant and I, my friend the plant and I, the way in which we're exchanging matter with our environments in a specific way and um what do you mean specific way rocks doing it in a specific way too yeah right right exactly so but but the details of how a life form and a rock are doing that are different um there are processes going on with these living with we living organisms where um we are uh eating and excreting and exchanging um, energy in a specific way with our environment, e e eating certain kinds of chemicals, extracting energy from them, which is allowing us to to grow and move and have energy and do things, and then uh, excre excreting other chemicals in a, in, in a different energy state. But so isn't, that's... But isn't that rock absorbing some elements and then giving off other elements and then... Uh... Yeah, it, absolu it absolutely is. And in fact, if you look at this rock as a part of a larger system, which of course ultimately it is, the reason why it's so beautiful and I picked it up on the beach there is because it's been through a lot and it's had an interesting story where it obviously, from the layered structure, it looks like it's some kind of sedimentary rock and was records some era of time when the layers were getting uh, deposited in a place on the earth and then, then um, uh, compressed under pressure and then you know turned it into a rock and then obviously it's been tossed around in the ocean and but you're using and, past tense um, here and yes but yeah but if you could use present tense if you just extend the now to a billion years right right so 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 this rock in fact is participating in all kinds of interesting cyclic processes on the earth which it is true if we look at them in some kind of billion year time lapse do take on more of the properties of, uh, I think, of a living organism. This is, of course, you know, getting into Gaia territory. One of the reasons why I'm attracted to looking for aliens is because, hey, I'm going to 
recontextualize, you know, I'm going to find out who I am by leaving who I, where I came from. Yeah. So finding out that I was American when I left America, etc. And so I guess we can find out, I guess I'm hoping that we will find ourselves when we find other things. Do you agree with that then? Absolutely. Is that part of your motivation? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I, there, there are so many ways that we um, see the universe through lenses and blinders and filters that we are we can't be aware of and when you get away from home you, you see things in a new way and when you meet um, others with different experiences and uh, different histories you see things in a new way and for 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 me personally and for us as a as a species uh, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be incredibly enlightening in all kinds of ways we can speculate on and then a whole bunch more that we don't have a clue about for us to um, learn about and maybe even exchange information with, with aliens.